Hi there Year 5, welcome to Week 3's Home Learning videos. This Monday we will be looking at another element of crime and punishment that we've not yet looked at and I'm looking forward to seeing if the work that you produce is just as good as the work that you've sent through to us from the last two weeks. I've been very, very impressed. If you see this symbol, what I would like you to do is pause the video because that will give you time to be able to stop it so that you can either discuss or write down the ideas that I've asked you to or complete the activity that I have asked you to. What we are going to be doing today is we are going to be looking at a story that I have created and we are going to be thinking about the story map and also the emotions that are present in each part of the story map. If we're really wanting to challenge ourselves, what I would like you to do is be thinking about synonyms. Now remember, a synonym is a word that means exactly the same thing as that first word that you've got. So for example, sad and upset. On your home learning grid, you should have a sheet that looks like this. Can you please open it now? This will enable you to read through the story with me. That was a single thought that filled my head. I had to run to keep moving or else all would be lost. My feet pounded against the raw African earth and the evening wind whipped at my skin. Sweat pounded down my sweltering forehead. My muscles burned and every bone in my body screamed at me to stop, slow down. But I couldn't, they were chasing me. Suddenly, a root grabbed my ankles and pulled me down so I landed with a huff on the winding ground beneath me. The alien man ran towards me as stealthily as cats, holding long weapons? I wasn't sure what it was, but my quivering body knew to be afraid. As the men hauled me from the floor of the forest, I took the time to analyse my captors. Their white, pale faces looked tired and were covered in dirt and mud, and their eyes shone with excitement. Were they truly happy and joyful to be taking me away from my home? After a long, exhausting trek from all that I have ever known, I saw more people like me, who had dark skin and spiritless eyes. As I walked closer, I was able to see that they were trapped in tiny cages and tied up with painful-looking ropes. I quickly understood that this was my fate, too. Days and nights later, with limited food to keep us alive, we were dragged onto a boat and chained by our necks and hands so we couldn't move. With around 450 other Africans on the ship, I was a sardine without the space to move. We must have been aboard this vessel for two months, while only being fed corn mush and limited water. I could feel my body deteriorating and weakening day by day. Indeed, death was all around it. It was all I could smell, feel, hear and think. Death. When the nauseating rocking of the boat stopped and we arrived at our destination, we marched down to this foreign land, trying to remain steady on our unused feet. Around us, pale men and women were staring at us like we were animals, refusing to meet our curious eyes. Quickly, I understood. We were different from them. They did not like us. As I tried to make out their different language and tongue, we were led to a large square and paraded around like show ponies, which made... The strange people gather and stare at us, but this time they had a different look in their eye. Greed. Loud voices surrounding me and I tried to work out what was going on, but I couldn't understand them. Some of the strangers came closer to me, inspecting me and lifting my arms up. What were they doing? I heard the word sold and I couldn't help but realise that that word would change my life forever. A man by the name of John Smith collected me later that day from my pen. He was admired among the, these monsters and all of my fellow captives did their best to keep their heads down when he was around in order to avoid his punishment. My name was stripped from me and I was to answer only as Emma, which took a long time to get used to. As soon as we got there, we were put to work on a plantation where every second of daylight was spent picking cotton for the master to profit from. It was clear that we would be here for the rest of our lives. In return for our back-baking work in the scorching sun, we were given basic food, bad cuts of meat and cornbread mostly. After our work, we returned to our shabby hut, which I share with several other women. 
It's nice to have the company, but the spirit is gone in our eyes. The spirit only returns when we sleep as we dream of Africa, of the roots under our bare feet, of the smell of the earth and the dust, of the crackle of the dry leaves that blow in the wind. I don't know how we will spend our lives here. Writing that story, I didn't specifically say what it was about because I wanted you to use your skills to be able to work it out using the evidence within that story that I created. So what do you think that that story is about? You've got somebody running away, you've got somebody that's being trapped in a ship and then somebody that's being sold. What do you think all of that evidence points to? done if you said that the evidence points towards slavery because that is what you're going to be doing with me this week. This is a topic and I've spoken to lots of you already about this that I feel really really passionate about. It's quite a hard-hitting topic, it's quite a grown-up topic and I was having a think um, because I did this actually in year seven and I thought actually it's a pretty important thing to be learning about and I think that my year fives can handle this. Uh, we are going to be looking at the transatlantic slave trade, which is when men, women and children were taken from Africa and they were sold to America. Um, Europe was involved in that as well, but we will look, be looking at that a little bit later. On the story and based on this picture in front of you, I would like you to have a think. What is slavery? What does that actually mean? And very well done if you said that slavery is when men, women and children were sold over to people. So they were owned by another person and had to do exactly as they said. Obviously, that is a horrible thing to have happened in history, which is why I think it is so important to really, really understand it. Um, and particularly the fact that it was so harrowing for the slaves that were captured and taken from not just their country, but their continent, and taken all the way across the seas to somewhere that they didn't recognise, that where they didn't speak the language. And I want us really, really to think about the emotions of those people in this lesson. So I would please like you to draw your story map. And on your story map, as normal, I would like you please to go back and read or listen to me, depending on how you would like to do it, um, to see the structure of the story. What happens first? What happens next? So first, the person is running. This slave that is about to be captured is running. And then she trips. She falls and she knows that people are coming after her with weapons. OK, once you have done that, I would like you to come back to this video. So go through the whole story and draw it can be stick men um, in black and white similar to what I have done or you could choose to go the extra mile and do it with your colouring pens make it really arty and really creative. Well done for doing that year five you should have gone all the way from the beginning to the very end of your story mapping as you go. What I would like you to think about now is all of the emotions that your character is feeling because they are probably feeling lots of different emotions at each part of the story. And I would like you to spider diagram around each part the emotions in which they are feeling. So, for example, for this first one, I've put she must be feeling desperate. She's sprinting away from these strange people that she's never met who are carrying weapons away from her home and she doesn't know maybe why they're chasing her she must be absolutely desperate but then I was thinking of more because there are definitely more emotions that she would have been thinking about and the, the next thing that came into my head was the word scared but I stopped myself there and I thought actually that's probably not the most powerful word that I can use yes she was scared but then I started thinking about all of the synonyms that I could use so I thought of the words panic stricken and terrified. Now thinking about all of these emotions are really going to help us later on in the week which is why I want us if you think that you would like to challenge yourself to think about all of these synonyms 
that mean the same thing. Okay, so scared and panic stricken, they mean the same thing, even though they're a different word. And I've done this with my next one as well. When she's running, she must be feeling exhausted, which is also the same as fatigued, bone tired and weary. So your task now is for each part of your story map, I would like you please to spider diagram some words around it. How is your character feeling at this moment in time? Or can you think of any other powerful words that mean the same thing if you think that you want to challenge yourself? fantastic work today year five and I'm really looking forward to seeing the story maps that you've created and also the emotions that you've thought of to go with those story maps. Have you come up with some synonyms that are going to really impress me? Can you please send your learning through to the year five email so that we can take a look and have a respond to it. Have a wonderful rest of your day.